We get an inset promo from La Conexion Can-Am. They call out everyone. So this may have actually been their first match together because their timing was off on all their double teams. But in the end, they win with a slingshot splash, and they're celebrating, they're happy, and they got these great bodies Bro. incredible <laughs> tans. Just listen, this fucking, this was so 1980s, dude. They wrestled two nerds, okay? They weren't wrestling the Heart Foundation. They weren't wrestling the Barrio. British Bulldogs, okay? They're wrestling two fucking geeks. They win, obviously. And this fucking celebration these guys did. Oh. I mean, they're like... <laughs> Get a shot at me and Sean! Sean! Give me a high five, brother! Ah. Holy shit, Dude, we fucking beat fighting. these nerds! Yeah! <laughs> and they're jumping, and they're going crazy! I'm like... Fuck, dude. I was not prepared to run a place like that. You beat two dorks. That's what you did! Why are you so excited? Because they're awesome. God! Right before... I'd outrun you, brother. <laughs> yeah. No, we know. We know. Two right dorks. before when they celebrated, when uh, Martel slammed uh, the gladiator, gladiator laid there like he was a corpse. He didn't move one inch up until that, that the slam thing afterwards. That guy was acting like the Undertaker. Just... A corpse. <laughs> I uh, I remember these guys, and they were the high flying tag team. These guys were like, oh, they're jacked monsters. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> they're super heavyweights with great tans and great mullets. Yeah, <laughs> they can do enormous. A kick. <laughs> well, they were all uh, they were an awesome team. Yeah, they were for the like six months they were together. Resnick interviews the junkyard dog. He is giving out T-shirts. He has his photo in the new Superstars magazine. He's got a list of fools to target, such as Jake Roberts, Harley Race, Paul Endorf, Butch Reed. He just got himself remarried. <laughs> or something. He's listing, he's listing off all of this stuff, and then he randomly throws out, just got myself remarried. Or something. Or what something. <laughs> like, what? what and happen? Resnick just is like, cool, I got remarried. Yeah. <laughs> or so, anyway, so about or the... Something. Uh, yeah. So he might add the IC title to the gold around his neck. There's also Orton, Piper, Morocco. It's going to be a full, full year for me. Bobby Heenan's surprise is a video tribute, tribute to Captain Lou Albano. So I guess Albano was also managing the machines. They've never yeah. been seen together on this show. But what we see is 60 god-awful seconds of the machines versus Bundy and Stud. It's just horrible. And Stud clobbers Super Machine off the top rope. Then Bundy and Stud can't figure out who's legal. Eventually, Bundy gets the pin. It was rotten, rotten, rotten. That may have been the Machine's last match, too. And then, and or then studs. he laughed Actually, and yeah. laughed and laughed. And that's it. <sighs> Paul Roma and his permed afro versus Sika. They go like... Two minutes, it's back and forth, and Sika wins with the Samoan drop out of nowhere, like a critical in Fire Pro Wrestling. He crushed him with the Samoan drop. He yes. sure did. Oh my gosh. I thought Roman Reigns' dad looked great. <laughs> I thought he looked all right. <laughs> Except for that Samoan drop where, yes, he murdered yeah, he that. Killed well, he looked guy. great. <laughs> Roman looked dead, but you know. Jeez. Resnick interviews the British Bulldogs. So they've got a lot of challengers. Some of those challengers have some very bad managers. So they got Matilda to take care of these managers. And Resnick has Dynamite Kid. How powerful are her jaws again? Dynamite says, oh, she can get to 75, maybe 80 pounds of bite pressure. And he's talking. And he says, oh, excuse me, what was that, Matilda? And he leans in, and the dog, like, licks his ear. And he says, oh, she says we're the best team in the world, and we're going to keep the belts for a long time. Then they bury all their competition. The dream team is washed up. We've already kicked their asses. Sheik and Volkov, they fuck up too much. We got a fucking dog. We're going to win. It's funny because this dynamite kid was a... Bastard. Of all the people on this show to term him such. Yeah. So anyway, Am I but, wrong? but man, that guy, boy, he loved that dog. He's kissing the dog. He's cuddling the dog. 
It's one of those guys that he didn't like people, but he sure loved animals. Although I couldn't help but notice that when he wanted the dog to talk to him, he did grab it by its neck and pull it over. Foreshadowing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that Barry O, by the way. Hmm. That is... Uh, Four that, matches ago. Yeah. Oh, so, someone brought it up on the thing here. I, I'm busy doing a lot of stuff over here. But anyway, mm-hmm. you know that uh, uh, Bob Orton? Heard of him? Yeah. That's that's Randy's dad. Right. Okay. Barry O uh-huh. is his dad's brother. Right. So he's Randy's uncle. Thank you. Got all that, everybody? Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, we were just talking the other day about how, goddamn, like, you know, when when Randy first debuted, people couldn't believe that's Cowboy Bob's kid. But when you really look at Cowboy Bob, especially now that Randy's in his 40s, it's like, you could totally tell that's a guy's dad. Oh, yeah. But, man, you look at Barry O, and it's like, he doesn't look like either of them. Like, at all. He looks like the Renegade. Remember the Renegade? A little. The mm-hmm. guy that did the uh, Ultimate Warrior gimmick in WCW? Yeah. He looks like the Renegade. Like, it's just, it's bizarre. Like, some people, some people in the same family, it's like uncanny how much they look like each other. And then there's old Barry O. Looks nothing like his brother. Looks nothing like his nephew. It's just a guy. Anyway. Dino Bravo versus Mario Mancini. <laughs> oh, my God. You say that, I can't, I can't read you. Do you like it or hate it? Oh, hate well, I hated it, but I laughed really hard. Yes, that's, that's, okay. that's Mario was... Mancini's. <laughs> okay, like that boxing spot they did in the middle of this. He had some of the most horrifically hilarious <laughs> bumps I've ever seen in my life. He looked horrible. Oh. Dino Bravo looked terrible. <laughs> Dino Bravo, actually, you know, it's funny. It's like, you know, in the YWF, I used to do that side suplex. It's what they called it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Dino would like lift him up like for a backbreaker, but he would just drop. Yeah, and I, I stole it from Dino Bravo, but uh, it doesn't look very good. I, I bet you did it better than him. I'm sure he did. Yeah, and he he hit it in this match, and uh, I forget what Gorilla said. Something like uh, he said something like um, odd suplex type thing. I believe that's what he called that's it. Pretty close to what he said. Yeah, weird suplex type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember what he called it, but it was like, yeah, it looked like shit. This match is terrible. The crowd turned on it. Jeez, I wonder why. Just booing the entire affair. Because it sucked. Yeah, but matches suck on the show every week. Think about how bad this had to have been. It was. Yes. I watched it. Yes. It's much worse than usual on this show. Dino wins with what you might call a back suplex. This was a disaster. Yeah, it sucked. We're here in the snake pit, <laughs> where Jake Roberts is ranting about nuclear war and kids on drugs and all the horrors of the 1980s. But he's the man who is going to lead us all through this. Oh, yeah? Because, as he put it, I've got it going for me. <laughs> you know what I, I love about about Jake? You know, everyone always talks about how he was a great promo, and you know he had, he had brilliant promos. He didn't unlike everybody else. And he was a fantastic promo, and a fantastic talker. And he was a great psychological wrestler. But... Something that people don't mention that it's just like so obvious watching the snake pit is how he is such a great heel because he does everything in his power to be unlikable. So nowadays, you know, you watch these promo battles where guys go back and forth and, you know, somebody will bury the other guy and the other guy will laugh or have a snide look on their face and bury them back or whatever. Every time Jake is out here with the baby face, he tries to say something cocky, some heel line, and the baby face turns it around and throws it back in his face, Mm -hmm. and Jake never doesn't sell it. Oh, it's awesome. If anything, he oversells it. He gets so angry to have it thrown in his face. He starts fucking jumping around in circles. He's so mad. He's so angry that they, they got him on that one. And, man, you never saw someone sell like Jake for these uh, these promo battles. Hogan eventually just brings himself out. You're tired of yes. listening to Jake, and they go back and forth. You run with the devil. Yes, Jake says. I run with all the Hulkamaniacs. If you're the snake, when are you going to get the courage to strike? Basically daring Jake to hit him. And Jake knows he's trapped. He can't hit him because he actually is a coward. Yes. But he doesn't want to be proven to be a coward, but it's happened. So he's like, ah, he's so mad. <laughs> he's jumping around like Rumpelstiltskin. Yes. 
<laughs> and Hulk just leaves. He just walks off. Jake's humiliated on his own show. <laughs> it was never about being a cool heel for Jake Roberts. He was a shitty, evil man. And when the baby faces got one up on him, he'd sell it big. So as a fan, you're like, yeah. The Hogan only, sure told him. Not only did Hogan leave, he actually turned his back on Jake Again, Roberts. yes. Yes. I was curious looking at this to see how old this old man Hogan was at the time. He was 33. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> Jake the Snake was 32. Oh. So ba- basically, if it were 2024, they'd just be called up from developmental. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.